if I got maybe older, I'll okay. say about 14, I was molested by a family member. About homelessness, uh, I know you see a lot of homelessness in Greensboro. What is your thoughts about it? Uh, it's sad because a lot of people don't have to be homeless. They choose to be homeless because they'd rather be outside getting high. To try I, to I, get sober? Yes, I got clean. I stayed okay. clean from 2012 to two, 2020. Wow. Until I got molested by another family. What's up, YouTube? Top Flight USA back with another one. How you doing, young lady? How you doing? What's good? What's good? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Uh, what's your name, age, and where you from? Uh, my name is Ophelia. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey, and I'm 50 years old. Patterson, New Jersey, and yeah, 50 right. years run, old. Run, run, run. You look great for 50. I know that's right. <laughs> um, how long you been in North Carolina? Oh, say about 10 years, but my mother and family is from here. Okay. Wow. So um, how do you like it so far? Oh, I love it. Never going back to Jersey, only to visit. Really? Okay. Um, are you homeless right now? Oh, uh, but of course not. Of course not. Okay. You know saying? But I, I do my thing thing, but no, I'm not homeless. I have me a place to stay. That's good. That's wonderful. Um, do you have any siblings? I have three brothers and one sister. Okay. Mother and father passed away. Oh, really? I'm sorry to hear about that. Wow. Um, out of your brothers and sisters, are you the oldest, the youngest? I'm the baby. Really? Okay. Baby, baby. All right. Um, let's talk about your upbringing a little bit. Who? Uh, would you say you had uh, grew up in a fairly normal childhood? Like, oh, I grew up in an awesome family hood. Okay. Um, lived in a, in the projects, the hood, but uh, we lived like we were, I guess you say, middle class. I'm saying like uh when Nintendo came out, we was the first ones to get it. Okay. Uh when uh roller skates and all that other good shit came out, we was the first ones to have it in the projects, color TVs, first one niggas to have it in. Wow. So yeah, I had great upbringing. Great. Okay. So you grew up in a uh two parent household? Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. So how was that growing up with two parents? Oh, um unfortunately I have I'm sorry to say for other people though, but for me it was great. Especially to have a father figure on your back to know to let you know what it's like to have a man how to treat you and you know upbringings and things you should accept and what things you shouldn't accept mom was okay but wasn't a mom mom but she did what she's had she did what she possibly could do okay uh what do you mean by that she wasn't a mom mom can you uh, explain uh, that a little bit okay as we say you know how you have a mom but she's supposed to love you but she loves everyone else but her kids oh wow so that was your situation yeah okay so how did that make you feel confused lost upset um lost for love for your mother you know what i'm saying that motherly love to say um baby how was your day uh i love you baby and things like that but my father was my father was that nigga. he he definitely showed the love all the way through right uh did you ever get a chance to ask her why actually i really did audience and i'm i'm so sorry to say this she said she only loved us because she had us. Wow. How did that make you feel when she said that? <sighs> Upset, confused, but because I had my father on my side, it kind of made it a little better, but still looking for that motherly love to just say, I love you. It, it really, to this day, for me to be 50, it still bothers me, even though she's not around. Wow. Man. And, it's just, and that's what made me choose not to have kids. So you don't have any kids? Never been pregnant, no. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a tough question. Uh, did anything ever happen to you growing up sexually? No. I, I, that's, a, that's a beautiful part until I got maybe older. Okay. I'll say about 14. I was molested by a family member. I'm just going to leave it at that. Wow. Uh, a close family member like a... A brother, a sister, or a cousin? No. Okay. No, no. Definitely wasn't a brother or sister. No, it was uncle, auntie. Okay. Wow. Did you tell anybody about that when it happened? No, I didn't because I didn't know how to go about because that's where that motherly thing's supposed to kick in. By me not being able to talk to my mom about things. That's what made it even more harder for me to talk and tell somebody about what was happening to me. Wow. 
I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Uh, even when you went to school, you didn't tell like your counselors or nothing? No, because uh, <laughs> I have a crazy growing up. I grew up in Jersey half of my life and half of my life here in Greensboro because a situation happened between my parents and them. So she sent me away from my father to get back at him. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a little crazy. Yeah, there. It, gets, it gets deep, y'all. It gets kind of deep. You know? The more yeah. questions he asks, the deeper it's going to get. We just scratching the surface right now. <laughs> we might have to do a part two on you. Hey, you might need to help me write a book on it. Oh, yeah. You have a lot to talk about. That's wild that you had that experience so young and you couldn't even like run to anybody with it. You couldn't tell anybody, not even the school. No, we. I didn't, I didn't know how to because once again that motherly advice and t talking to your mom, you know what I'm saying, one on one. I didn't know how to go to another adult to talk. Wow. So, what advice would you give another young girl that was your age right now that is afraid to tell somebody? What would you tell this young girl? If you can't go to your teachers and tell them, go to your best friend. Uh, go to when maybe one of your best cousins, your close cousins. Um, tell someone. I mean, go to counseling. Talk to someone just to get it off your chest, and maybe from there, it'll open up a door to where you can possibly talk to them, and they'll talk to them, or you y'all can all get together and have a counseling meeting. Something. Don't hold it on y'all. Don't hold it on your chest. It, it it's gonna break you down. I don't want to say negative. I don't want to say positive because I don't know how strong of a person or being that you are, but it will weigh on your chest. That's right. Uh, that was great advice. Um, please tell somebody, you know, uh, even if you don't have the courage to write a letter, yeah, write try. it down. That's right. Get a diary. Right. Um, about homelessness, uh, I know you see a lot of homelessness in Greensboro. What is your thoughts about it? Uh, it's sad because a lot of people don't have to be homeless. They choose to be homeless because they'd rather be outside getting high and things like that. You know what I'm saying? If y'all all buddies getting high, y'all all basically get a check. Y'all can put four people together and get your apartment in place. So it's no excuse. Right. Uh, do you have any addictions? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, would you mind sharing it with us? Uh, as they say, is a white man's drug. No, it's not. It is a drug that anybody can get addicted to. Um, it's just up to you how you want to deal with it. Um, I say, I, I can't really say, but for me purposely, I was kind of tricked into it, so I didn't know exactly what I was getting into. Okay. So therefore, if I would have known what the drug was and what I was doing, I would have never touched it. Right. And uh, what do you mean you was tricked into it? How, how was that? Uh, I was, I was, I wanted some coke to sniff, and they told me it was cooked up coke. Never heard that term before, even wow. though I'm from the projects in the hood. Right. Because we were sheltered from the drugs and stuff like that. So what effect did it have on you? Instantly got addicted and ran from then. Wow. Uh, so how long have you been using that drug? Uh, I think I started maybe... 2000 and say 2008 okay 10 somewhere around there have you ever got any help to try I, to I, get sober yes i got clean i stayed okay. clean from 2012 to two, 2020 wow. until i got molested by another family member really what in the world <laughs> so you was down here when this happened? Yes, unfortunately, yes. And what happened then? Did you tell anybody? No, I just started getting high and went from there. And as as uh, as they say, things started going downhill for me. And and I said, "Fuck it." Wow, man, I'm sorry you had to go through that. That was two times. By family members. Mm -hmm. And I was doing good when I was when I was clean. And you was clean. So that made you relapse. Find wow. a family member on top of you, knocked out sleep. 
Wow. Man. Man, I'm sorry you had to go through that. That that's not right. Did you have any have you had any therapy since that situation? No, I have self therapy. And we're not talking about the drug part. Okay. I'm saying. Um I talk to myself, I talk to family members. Um, I get it off my chest any chance I get to talk conversate with a stranger, uh, or a local friend. But therapy, no, I've never been to therapy. Wow. Do you think uh you might need therapy at this point, or you think uh, you are kind of like coping with it yourself is working? I, I at the, at my age and time now, and the way the life is, and uh, the, here is, I I wouldn't mind going to therapy. I would I would like to have therapy, someone to talk to, someone to help me take the step because I, I I'm I'm one of those that need. Or say stability. Yes. You need someone on your side to yes. help you along the way to take the steps. That's right. You know I'm saying if I have to take the steps by, by myself, then pretty much wouldn't get it done. Wow. Man. Um, Had so many disappointments in life. So it's like, what's the point? What's the need? Right. So how do you make your money out here? I work part time and I do my little hustling, doing drugs, selling drugs and stuff like that. Okay. So you pretty much uh, get it by any means necessary. To a certain extent and respect, yes. <laughs> a certain extent and respect. That's right. <laughs> we got it. Um, why do you think there's so many people out here homeless right now? I I really I can't even answer that question because it's it's not it's they shouldn't be because it's too many openings and outlets for people to go through and get help. Uh, if they want it, you know what I'm saying? I, I think it's because they choose to want to get high and don't want to go go get the help. Or uh, I, I don't know because I don't ask people questions on that right. person. If they, you want me to know, then I prefer you to tell me. I've always was raised, don't ask people questions, let them tell you. Right. Uh, why do you think it's so many uh, people with addictions in the streets? I can't really speak upon them. I can only speak for myself. Okay. You know I'm saying some people are just not strong, got a strong mind, strong will, strong power to avoid it, or they probably want to, they probably started with weed and want to let me try something real strong and see how, or let me see what it is and this and that. So that's pretty much how it pretty falls. You know what I'm saying? You try one, then you're like, well, let me take, let me see how this, how I've seen such and such do it. If such and such could do it, I could do it. But it's not necessarily true and it's not always real like that so right. if you see a friend doing it don't be a follower please don't that's right um do you see yourself ever getting clean again yes yes i do i can't say when but i'm 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 very ready you know what i'm saying i'm ready to get clean i'm ready to take the steps and go through the motions and whatever i have to do if i I don't want to say go to a program, but I I would do an in in program or out program. Okay. You know what I'm saying I don't need to go in there to stay. You know, what I'm saying I can do it outpatient. Okay. And go back to work. Right. If I'm working, it keeps my mind. You know what I'm saying occupied. That's right. Um, I would love to see that, uh, especially with that uh long time you had before, uh. You said you was clean for a good amount of time, so I know you can do it again. And uh, that would be something we would love to see. We would love to follow your journey. And uh, even if you don't, we still would love to follow your journey because you have a good story, and we barely scratched the surface on it. Like, <laughs> I, I really didn't want to go deep because I want to do a part two on your story and really dig in to get to know you personally. Yeah, we can um, sure enough do a sit down and do it. We sure, sure, no problem. Okay. I, I want people to know. I, I, as they say, God is God got our back. You know what I'm saying? That's we're right. God's children. He's gonna make sure that we're okay until He knows we're okay. You know what I'm saying? Like we're His safe children. You know what I'm saying? Until He knows that we're safe and we're good, then He'll let us go. Right. Yeah, I would definitely want to sit down and get your full story uh, on a part two interview. Um, so, uh, 
uh, just a couple more questions and we can wrap this one up. Sure. Uh, if your family happens to come across this video, what do you think their thoughts will be? Damn, 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 kitten, not again. <laughs> <laughs> but they will also say, well, at least she's not like she was the first time. She's okay. much stronger. Uh, and I'm not in Jersey. Right. So uh, I had a lot of outlets and I have family. So I, uh, and I'm, my mind is much stronger, even though I'm still getting high, but uh, is more on a better path than out there tricking and dating and stuff. So right. I'm not doing that. That's right. You know uh, do you think they'll uh, try to reach out and maybe uh, help in some type of way? Yeah, they would. They would. But okay. it's not like they don't know I'm, I'm not getting high. They have assumed and made an assumption. They don't really know, but they know I'm doing something. Okay. Uh, if there was any uh, kids watching this video, uh, could you motivate them about uh, homelessness and addictions? Please seek help. Go talk to someone. Reach out. I mean, if you don't get along with your parents, talk to a counselor. Talk to a teacher. Talk to your best friend. Talk to your best friend's mom. Someone, reach out, please. I I really, really want you to. Don't. I don't want you guys going down the path that I did. And I made sure, for sure, that my nieces and nephews did not go to, down the pattern that me and my brothers did. I promise you, my nieces and nephews are doing great, have wonderful jobs. Bunch of kids, though. But <laughs> they they did a little bad, bad, but nothing that couldn't be fixed right away that's so, right please reach out talk to someone it, it, it's help out there you know what I'm saying it really is don't think there's no help out there because people tell you you know what I'm saying that there's no help it is you know what I'm saying uh how a hospital go go to uh a, a personal help uh um uh what they call it a health agency someone it someone will reach out you don't don't never think that no one will ever reach out and try to grab your hand but someone will that's right uh i appreciate the motivation uh that was beautiful uh i agree with what you're saying um thank you for doing the interview and uh we will come back for a part two i'm gonna leave you my number uh we gotta get that full story <laughs> kitten from new jersey patterson new jersey uh, thank you for doing the interview. God bless you. God bless you. And y'all, please stay safe and stay off drugs. That's right. Don't follow me. That's right. Follow my story. Follow the story. That's right. <laughs>